It's the Jobbers Tears Podcast. Greetings, fellow Jobbers, and welcome to another amazing and special episode of the Jobber Tears Podcast. As always, I am Janelle from HR, here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black, and our very, very special guest, the owner of Battle Club Pro, Mr. Joaquin Morales. Welcome to the show. Those that are on the live feed, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, you can follow us on the Jabba TS Podcast, um, at Jabba TS Podcast on Instagram and on our YouTube page. Um, well, welcome, sir. Hi. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. Gentlemen, how are you? Good, man. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. Before we do start, I do want to give a special thank you to BCW and Ashana Wrestling for having us last Friday at their last judgment to event in the Bronx. Uh, where we saw our boys Yaya and Savannah Evans um, debut Black. of town and Montana Black, who will Good also Montana. be here this weekend again at Battle Club Pro <clears throat> Show in New Jersey. So the whole South was there. The the dirty South. <laughs> the whole and South was whole there. Whole ass South. All right, so we are going to open up behind Gorilla's position as with our culture catch up. So it seems like hip hop has been had some rumbles recently. So as everyone knows, Pusha T and Drake went back and forth over the summer. There were a lot of hits and blows, you know, blows below the belt. Um, but apparently, Pusha T went on Joe Budden's podcast that Drake's best friend, 40, who he did mention in the disc, that his girl told him the information about Drake and that his girl told Pusha. So gentlemen, is this a classic case of pillow talk yes <laughs> yes yes and yes you can't trust chicks um i'm a little offended <laughs> y'all talk too much i built the whole brand on chicks bro huh. slow down I'm can't just, trust them i'm just saying <laughs> guys she didn't, she, talk way more she didn't like them she was using them <laughs> she was a there's good women and then there's bad women i mean <laughs> there's some there's some good women there's some thotty women I mean, I feel like there's a little thought in everybody. Nah, nah, she was thotty. Thotty McThotty. <laughs> and what happened was, she was using my man 40 for his chats. And was cool with Pusha. And telling Drake's business. This is messed up. This is completely I mean, messed who's up. who's really to blame? Is it the girl or the guy? It's both. It's both. Mostly the guy. Okay. Most of the guys to So we can't stay out here talking about thotty me thotty and not acknowledge that. But he has to know she's thotty me thotty. He's in the business. The man. He's in the business. You, you know what's funny? Drake has a has a line in one of his first on his first album about getting caught up with pillow talk because that's an entertainment business. It's one of, it's one of his lines. If you look it up. It's on um light it light up. It's pillow talk in music and wrestling in real life. There's a, you know, people do it all the time. I'm sorry, yeah, of course. You hear all the rumors in wrestling? I mean, wow, I, wow. I, I, I don't. <laughs> That's a wild you shade don't? at you. You don't? That's a wild shade at you. I'm you do, don't? It's not a shade. I mean, who you put a talk it's in with? It's not a shade, I'm just saying. I'm who are you in bed with? Definitely not, I don't need to be in bed, in bedfellows with someone nah, doing something. Nah, she, she knows everybody's business. Because but she that's because, because business. Business. The, no. biggest, the bigger this show goes, that's the more, the more everyone she was. Last time she told me some wow shit. And I was like, I was like, what you just said? What you just said? Of course, you probably call, call, girl. Tell me the good news, girl. No, no, no we were at the bar. No, no, no. I'm eating, I'm so away like, from my wigs. And she's like, I got something to tell you. People confide in me. And it's fine. I, I just know I had that so, wig so, so wait, I make wait, it wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So you know, so you know the difference then that girl that told Drake business. No. You are that girl. No, no, no. Because no. if you pillow told me these I'm Pusha. No, 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 and then the next thing you know, I end up knowing about it because she'd be like, "Yo, I got something to tell you." And I'd be like, "What?" And then it, I'll tell you this later. I can't tell you now. So, I'm not talking about on camera. So, so she's that girl you push her because obviously, no, 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 no. no. This, 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 this is what I'm gathering. She said this. You said that. Yo, you stay be pillow talking X Y Z. I didn't say she pillow talk. I didn't pillow talk, and I. Had I didn't no say she knows mad talk. rumors. Okay, but it stemmed off from that the pillow talk conversation, correct? No. Yeah, but, but she if got pillow talk. People telling her something. 
You're pushing T. That's how So cool. she's over here spreading people's business to you. She's not spreading nobody's I'm business. I'm not spreading nobody's business. She's not spreading nobody's business. Cause I'm the only person that knows it. And the rest of the community knows it. But okay. that shit she told me was mad wild. All I'm saying is this. All no, I'm no, 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 no. You don't understand. Thank you for doing The shit that she told me was mad wild. Because wow. I couldn't eat. And it was important. Tell you I will tell you later. Okay, 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 boom. Y'all, y'all call this girl Thotty McDotty. I didn't call her Thotty McDotty. I call her Thotty McDotty. Okay, okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now let's naturally think about it, right? Let's go backtrack into the entertainment business, all right? This is something I, I know and I've seen and witnessed myself. Yo, these girls are nothing but groupies, all right? If you don't treat them how they want to be treated, they're going to spread your business. No, he, she did treat her well because Pusha said, Pusha said it. No, 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 Pusha said it. Pusha was like, yo, um, there was this girl. He was giving her opportunities. Helping her out. Yeah, 100%. But you don't know what went wrong at one point. No, nothing went wrong. wrong. If, if, if you're giving a chick opportunities, then nothing went wrong. You're giving somebody opportunity, nothing went wrong. And, and he even said, he even said, he even said it. I, she didn't really like him. She was using him. Because I mean, she knew him personally. And then he talked about how the, another girl, because Drake put $100,000 on his head to get information about shit. And then another girl who we called his sister, who was trying to get the hundred thousand dollars. At the end of the day, niggas ain't shit, chicks ain't shit, it was, it's all it's a whole big game. Nobody's shit. I mean all I'm saying is this one. I'm this shit. All I'm saying is this one. Listen, you be talking mad shit. <laughs> and that shit was wild. I think you should switch it up a bit, because this is a perfect lead in for me. How's this wait <laughs> how is this? Our superstar spot, like the perfect segue into from this shit. No, into what I'm gonna be talking about. Oh well, yeah. Duh. So then you should talk about SD 1000. That oh, was no. relevant, right? No. Okay. I'm skipping. I'm trying to get control because I got a huge card to talk about, and this I don't care about the million dollar company. I'm sorry. Well, we will get to your company <laughs> in a We're few. We're not going off track, B. <laughs> we got programs, we got viewers, we got a show to run. All right, so let's move on to our superstar spotlight. As our <laughs> guest mentioned, um, it is no other than Ariel Swole Monroe. Big Swole. Get Big it right. Swole. Big Swole. So she has been a part of this. She is May Young Classic as well as she has appeared on WWE Raw on TV. Um, she was trained by George South who wrestled um, for Jim Crockett Promotions for WCW, WWF back in the day. And she is married to the former Cruiserweight Champion Cedric Alexander. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Fun fact. Really? You didn't I didn't know, know that. Did you notice, uh, do you watch 205 Live? Not really. Do you, did you notice uh, Cedric came out in Harley Quinn gear? I don't, I, I don't think nothing of it. I just said, all right. Right. Well, they gender swap because Ariel came out in Joker gear. Oh. I just say, all right, cool. Yeah, cool. Bro. I don't think nothing of it. So she has, once again, had her you know feet wet in the WWE, but she is also landing in her debut at Battle Club Pro this weekend. Facing the icon champion and Leo's favorite, Miss Harlow O'Hare. She's your favorite? Are you coming to the show Saturday? No, I can't make it. He, just, he got kids. He got kids. He got kids. Oh. Don't worry about it. He, he, got just, kids. he just um, I was about to throw follows her on Twitter. Yo, yo, no, no. He follows her on Twitter. Okay, 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 okay. You need to know that, right? No, no, no. So just in case you want to the next event. Week, we were talking about like who are we gonna do? So I was like, let's see someone that's gonna be on the card for Battle Club Pro. Makes, makes sense. sense. And then this one says, so then we mentioned Battle Club, and he's like, oh, Harlow, she gonna be there? And we were like, yeah, she's a champion. Why would she not be there? He's like, oh, okay. So Leo is a huge fan of your icon. You know you can bring your kids. It's all me in Jersey. You know he you got, can bring got, your kids. He got twins. He got twins. And they little. They little. Bit. How little? How like, little? They just turned one. They look. Let them run around the ring. They'd be all right. <laughs> like, we got security. He's, he's working. We got security. Walk the walk, one can't walk to like a... Well, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Mr. Excuse owner me. himself. That's, not, that's, that's even better. One don't walk. You can just sit down with one right there and yeah. chill. He has to work. <laughs> that's, that's what he really he has shit to do. We're going to be here. That's he has that. kids and he has to pay the bills. So, to the They're owner, how did you come across Big Swole and what was... You know, you're planning stages on getting her on your two-year anniversary show. I was in contact with Ariel well.
well before we had her signed for this show. There's a mosquito in here. I'm going to kill it. Anyway, yeah. No, I was uh, in contact with her for a few months uh, prior to the July show. Uh, we talked, and I was like, I'd love to have you on. And she just randomly teased the match against Harlow. And I'm like, hey, that's my champ. Like, let's do this. And that's how it happened. Like, she's, she's incredible. Uh, we talked, you know. She kept the news from everyone that she was going to be on. And when she was announced, I was like, hit her up. I'm like, yo, I'm so proud of you. Like, I barely know you, but that's incredible. And she was like, you don't understand how hard it was to keep that secret. Because they make them keep that a secret up until they're going to do it. Could you imagine sitting on that? What are they, Marvel? <laughs> you, don't, I mean, you don't want to have spoilers, you know? They, like, unless they sure. announce you, you want to just keep it secret because it's a huge thing to sit there and work for that billion dollar company, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you. Sorry. Yeah, you got him. Did you get him? I think you got him. That's some Haitian shit you just did. That's crazy. But, um, so if you were to book her again, who would you want her to face? Oh my goodness. Um, man. See, the thing is, you don't want to. You don't want to no, use you want to plant some seeds. Why not? You got viewers on the live. You got YouTube. You her match. Her match is for the title. So if she wins, she's gonna be around for a long time, unless she loses the title. Like I mean, their match will decide the match for the next night at Innovative Pro. Whoever wins the Icons Championship that night will face LAX's Diamante. Mm. So it, it all depends on what happens. I mean, but. Obviously, that Southern talent is incredible. I want to bring them up as much as possible. The thing is that what makes us special, I'll say, is that we don't run all the time. We don't. There's build up. Like, damn, I want to see that next show. Damn, I want to see that next show. And I feel like that works for us. Oh. That's the Spanish in you guys. That just I feel like it works for us, you know, because what's the you biggest... You just killed a flying ass listener. <laughs> Bare hands. What? Bare hands. What? What makes the WWE, what's everyone's biggest problem with WWE? Oversaturation, right? Mm -hmm. You got like 48 hours of television to watch a week. How are you going to have a life if you're just sitting there and watching nothing but WWE? You know? Well, you know, I make it do. You make it do, <laughs> but... It's possible. It's, it's possible, but it's, it's strenuous, you know? And it becomes something that should be enjoyed. It turns something that you should enjoy into something that's tedious. And so they should have an off-season. I, I mean, I like the Lucha Underground all season. I do, and if you've paid attention to us, we pretty much take the winter off. You know, like, we ran in January, but then we went from January to May. Mm. Now, October's our last, you know, hoorah, and then I don't know when we'll come back for next year, but it'll be sometime next year. Like, mm. you, you, you gotta give people time, like, what is the- uh, To miss you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is it uh, distance or no? It, absence makes the heart grow fonder. But isn't, you know? it, isn't it kind of weird because, like, we're in such a world that people, it's, in the wrestling in general is saturated, oversaturated. You know what I mean? And like, just, just the- Indie wrestling is oversaturated. So, so would you feel like you get lost? Hold in on, show? hold on. Good indie wrestling is not. And that's not a shot at anybody. I just feel like what I do works. Mm -hmm. What I hear back from the workers, what I hear back from the fans, what I hear back from the sponsors, they tell me it works. Okay. If something's not broke, why, why try to fix it? I mean, I mean, like, I was gonna say this way. The indie wrestling is a little bit different because- It is. All right, maybe you not, you don't want shows in the winter time, but you may follow a particular wrestler that was at your show to another show, to yeah. this show, this yeah. show. That's, and that's media. how it should be, because exactly. you, you should be watching these guys on this level. Exactly. So you know who's gonna be there. Exactly. Like, I mean, perfect example, and, and, and I have zero to do with their success, other than being a, a stepping stone to get them where they need to be. This past week at, on Impact, Dave Sturcher, who's my former commissioner, Anthony Bowens, who has been at every Battle Club show, the Heavenly Bodies, who worked last summer for Battle Club, Jordan Grace, who's my first ever Battle Club Icons yeah, champion, yeah. they were all on Impact. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. that happens. So it's like, it's good to see these guys at these independent shows, because then you can see them come up, you know? Like, you don't get those out of nowhere things. You know where they're coming from. You understand their struggle. And what's best about indie wrestling is when you're at the show, you can speak to them like people. You don't have to pay out the ass for a meet and greet. Exactly. But this is, uh, th this is why WWE works. Because they don't wrestle nowhere else. Yeah, they, it's so, exclusivity. So, 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 like, this is why I feel like 
it's not oversaturated because that's all you see them at is over here. Well, no, I'm not talking about the talent specifically. I'm just talking about the oh. amount of. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. That, that, that's okay, 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 okay. But okay, okay. Now I understand. That's what I'm, this is clarifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's actually, yeah. yeah. But do I? Yeah, well, you're right. WWE is kind of oversaturated, especially Maybe certain everyone stuff. Everyone knows that. Yeah, but at the end of the day, you had, like you had two choices. You could just stick to watching Raw and SmackDown. That's it. Or you say, you know what? I don't watch nothing. Raw and SmackDown, 205, and watch the whole block on Wednesday. 205, make classic, and um, you can NXT. always, you can, yeah, like you know, you can, you have the option of switching it up. Like I'll be totally upfront. I haven't watched anything this week. I, I work three jobs mm -hmm. to support my wrestling habit. I run the two companies. I do gigs for other wrestling companies. This week I haven't been on the ball, but you know, you go back, you read what happened, you take a look at some highlights or whatever, you try to stay involved because we're all fans. You're in the business because you're a fan. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that it's so readily accessible is amazing. And all I can say when it comes to fans is that the product for independent wrestling is the same way. You can literally go on YouTube, I wanna see Yaya. I want to see yeah. Montana Black. I want to see yeah. Savannah Evans, and you'll find their stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all of our favorites. Right? All of our guys. We should create a stable. Evans. We Think are about stable. It. We are stable. No, but I mean, Java like, Tears. no, the no, but squad. like, we're, we're like a podcast. But no, I mean, no, no, like, our stable is a Java Squad. Yes. Part of the stable. Yes. Yes, the Java Squad. Think about it, bro. All right, so let's move on. As you did mention, Impact, and as we, uh, was that your first TNA Impact event? Because yeah, that was mine. Was. So as everyone knows, um, no, it wasn't actually. Oh, what you what the one in the um, the one in the baseball stadium, right? At Kobe? No, I went to the one at um, Manhattan Center. Okay, so that's so when the Hardys were there. Did not know. Um, TNA invaded New York City this past weekend, um, and they had their Bound for Glory pay per view at the Melrose Ballroom in Queens this past weekend, and they also did two TV tapings on one Monday, which me and several things went to. And they had the one Tuesday night as well here in New York. Um, so, my question to you gentlemen, work or shoot with Austin Aries? So, if everyone, if you did not watch the end of ba Bound for Glory where Austin Aries lost his Impact Championship, Heavyweight Championship to, I always want to say Johnny Nitro, and that's not his name. Johnny Impact. It's Johnny Impact. But... He's still Johnny Nitro to me. Johnny, so, Johnny Mundo on Wednesdays. <laughs> John Morrison, like, my man has like a thousand names, but it's so great. So, Aries lost the title, and after the match, one, he didn't sell the pin. We all, all can say that. And two, he basically left the ring, middle-fingered, um, what's his name, Don Callis, and walked off. And apparently, it's all, they're so, saying, so it's all trust, work. That's so why I trust Russell. Where... <laughs> He's doing this loose cannon gimmick and going to be interrupting all different parts of Impact here and there as a part of a new gimmick. So, sorry, because I'll start with you. Is it a work or a shoot? I don't trust wrestlers. I don't trust wrestling. I trust I'll, I'll trust wrestlers. I'll trust actors because I'm way too gullible. <laughs> <laughs> I believe everything. Be honest. <laughs> so, I don't trust these people. I don't, I don't get close to these people. I thought it was a work. When he originally did it, and everybody kept telling me like, no, it, it, he really meant it. Like even like you know, Sid of True Hills, even though the, the, he, you know, Mister in the um, mm -hmm. dictionary, you guys beat each other up all the time. Yeah, so yeah. He, even he was just like, yo, that shit, that shit was real. And and then another chick at the crowd was like, that that was real. I didn't believe it because it's it makes for good storytelling. Yeah, but it's also believable because the situation in WWE. Because if you look on Twitter, everybody was like, yo, this is the reason why he got problems with WWE because of his bad attitude. It was like throughout the Twitter feed of why WWE didn't like mess with him too heavy. Long story short, this is definitely a work. This is definitely a work and it's great work. It's phenomenal work and it makes sense because he's such a dick. <laughs> and those tweets that he was sending out was mad dickish. Like top of the line dickish. You, he was calling it um, Johnny Johnny. Impact. Johnny Impact's wife, fat, mad is respectful, <laughs> and it w it sounded really good. Now, do I mess with this? Yes. Now the Brian Pillman shit. You ever, you ever read his story? Oh yeah. He got the whole idea of doing this loose cannon shit from us from a um. 
I forgot the guy who the guy was from, but the guy was like read sales books and learn about how to sell yourself and become a character. And that's how he came up with the whole concept of doing what he was doing. And he did because he got, he got an amazing contract with WWE at the end of the day. But long story short, this is amazing. If this is really a work and I believe it's a work, this is absolutely amazing. I don't amazing. know what to believe anymore. Mr. Right. Black, what do you think? What are your thoughts? To be honest with you, I think it's a work. Because at the end of the day, they will not let a talent like that leave. They definitely let Del Rio, Del Rio leave like that. Del Rio was a piece they of shit. definitely did I don't did know though. why Del you Rio's said Alberto Del Rio. He did a lot of foul stuff. Why you bring that man to the conversation? Because He's I don't want what you're saying no, not no, to be factual. No, no, no. Yeah, because, because, because you're saying that they wouldn't, back, let, they wouldn't let someone do that. They yeah. definitely let but Alberto But why would it do the same that thing twice? This is not... They're bringing him back, though. They're, they're, they're going to bring him back, but... I mean, they look at WWE now. They're built on what TNA let go. They're yeah, built on what TNA let go. But let me just finish this point I was trying to make. It was just like, it's a work. Because honestly, he has a great contract. He's been going around indies wrestling everybody collecting championships. Now he's just going to do it in a different way. And everybody say, oh my gosh, the loose cannon gave me the party pivot. Nigga, listen, he's his own man. And he may get some inspiration from it, but he's gonna do it as always. Austin Aries. Austin Aries always had like this bad boy attitude to him since Ring of Honor days. So him doing this stuff like this ain't new. He's just doing it a different way. Like how many wrestlers, like how many times CM Punk, we thought that that pipe bomb was actually real, but it was a work shoe. Yo, people do this for the clout, for the attention. Now everybody blowing them, hit them up, this what do we need to do this side But people, little people didn't know, if they didn't bang with him, why didn't let him still train and rehab on their on their behalf? If he was such a bad attitude person. So everybody gonna work them about this. He's working you and he's smiling at home like these people actually believe me, son. Ha 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 ha. Now we show up, they say you're a house of glory, chilling there, this out there. Oh my god, what are you gonna do here? Da, 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 da. Yo, it's a word. That's how you get your bag. But he's also a dick, though. <laughs> I mean, why is there such an emphasis I mean, on the D? I mean, dick. I'm gonna say <laughs> this way. So I'm gonna say this way. Nice. I'm gonna say this. I never personally met him, so I cannot talk about if he's a dick or not. Because he may be a dick according to your standards, but to me, I'm looking like, nah, he ain't a dick. He's just the type of person that, yo, you don't tolerate certain stuff. And this is how you come across. I get it. That's it's true. Because when and I this met is... Brett, I thought he was gonna be a dick, and he actually was exactly. one of the nicest. People. Exactly. This <laughs> is why. That doesn't mean you can't be a dick and be a nice person. But all I'm saying sure. is this way: I cannot go off for how how he made that person feels. Because if he made me feel like, you know what, I understand why he does this way. Because what if everybody who told him that he's a dick and stuff like that, they never took the time out to actually get to know him and talk to him. I didn't say there was nothing wrong. Like Mr. I Black's before. getting deep. He, he, I, I didn't say nothing was wrong with that. He always gets like he, he's, still a, he's still a deep. dick. Deep. Stop saying that. You, 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 you talk about somebody, you talk about somebody's wife. <sighs> what if? You talk about, no, you talk about somebody's wife. That, that's crossing the line. We ain't doing no rap beef. I mean, kids and kids and family are kind of like you that know, should be off limits. That should be off. I don't even care if you're doing the work. You talk about somebody's wife. I mean, so Ronda it's okay. was out here talking about. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's okay. Ronda, Ronda. 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 It's okay. It's okay. Highlight of the week. It's okay. It's okay. What did Ronda say exactly? What did Ronda say exactly? We're not gonna get no, no, no. Because we, 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 we can talk about one. that. Because what, what exactly she said is that you kicked down um, John Cena's door. I mean, it was she didn't actually but, but, speak about John she, Cena. She didn't speak about John Cena. You talk about my wife being fat. So she says my child basically insulting my wife and insulting me at the same time. You know that. And, and, and you don't know what kind of disease she has or something like that that's, that's causing her to, have to gain weight or something. You don't know that situation, bro. At the end of the day. So if I call your wife fat, it's okay. No, that shit ain't okay. Hey, come on. <laughs> at the end of the, <laughs> at the end of the day, you don't know what them two discussed. You don't know what he allowed didn't allow. You don't know this. But he's the Austin Aries? Is that his real name, by the way? Is that his full, official full name? I've never I don't know. met it him. I've never inquired about him. You want to tell us Austin Aries' real name? I mean, but at the end of the day, it's a dickhead move. It's it, but it's a it's making everyone talk about it. Exactly. That is, that this is, is the name of it's the a, game. It's still work. There's nothing wrong with it. And this is why. At the end of the this day, is why, this is why I'm not being But you cash, know what? So that's Johnny it. Nitro. I mean, Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact. It's hard. Doobie's selling his girls off. We know from WWE days. So, with Cena. Huh? Your name is Daniel Haley Solwad Alright, Austin Aries. Austin Aries. Austin Aries. Austin Aries. Austin Aries. <laughs> Austin Aries. <laughs> Austin Aries like, the character whoa. is a dick. Whoa. I mean, okay, 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 okay. There you go. Just okay. like Austin just Aries like, is a dick. Just like, just like for example, Bill Cosby 
could have raped those girls, but Cliff Hustable, he's a doctor. Cliff Hustable. Cliff Hustable. I don't know why you always say the wrong name. Because like there's two separate people, according to Hogan. Hogan is the wrestler. I like Hogan the wrestler. No. But I don't like Terry. I don't like Terry. Terry. I don't like Terry. I don't like there's an NWO reunion going on. Okay. I don't like any so, of that shit. So? That shit is What are they going to do? Too sweet, everybody. And do we go for like no? You're old. Scott Hall can barely move. Exactly. Kevin Nash. Like that. Kevin Nash continue I mean, to work. People on complain stuff. Got him with well, a shirt. Talking about. I don't know Scott Hall. I know Razor Ramon. No, you should actually know Scott Hall. He's actually. I don't know Scott Hall. But I know Razor Ramon. That's the cool one. Stables. Let's talk about the tweet of the week. So Tamatonga. 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 The bad boy. His birthday was the other day. And Finn Balor, who was one of the OGs of the Bullet Club, tweeted to him, happy birthday. Happy and birthday. the bad boy's response was, and I quote, thanks OG, triple OG, BC, got some, some ex-members coming your way. Don't forget what they did to you. So there has been so many tugs and pulls about the elite. So those that do not, you know, watch New Japan or Ring of Honor or any other stuff besides WWE, the Elite does include the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. Um, and there's always, for the last, I feel like, 10 months, last entire 2018, I feel like it's just always been this whole, like, hush-hush of the Bullet Club coming to WWE. So my question to you gentlemen, do you see this happening in 2019? And if it does happen, what would be one of your dream matches that you would like to see either Young Bucks or Kenny Omega in WWE? Um, I take that, wait, I'll let our guests go first. Okay, go ahead. You asking me about a Young Bucks dream match in the WWE? Yeah. I can tell you a dream match of mine when it comes to the Young Bucks is facing the Ugly Ducklings. I think the oh, Bucks versus the Ducks would be incredible. That would be dope. Uh, Pete Rosado, don't steal my match. <laughs> um, in WWE, I... I uh, I feel like the default is Usos versus the yeah. Bucks, and that's let's let's see let's see the new the, the reunited Kings of Wrestling versus the Young Bucks. How about that? Well, those that don't know where the King of Wrestling are. Cesaro and uh, Chris Cassius Ono, oh really Chris Trash Hero. Who what? Trash. We went through this. Bugging. Season one. Did you not remember we had that whole conversation? Bugging. I love Chris Hero. Chris Hero's trash. Chris. I mean, I mean, his attire, is, his attire looks foolish, you know, I can't take him seriously wearing those fake jerseys, but I don't know if Cassius The gimmick is trash, okay. It's because of his let me, let me, let me reinstate. That's why they put the jerseys the on. The gimmick is trash. No, you that's work with what they give you. Huh? That's him. But it's still it's trash. trash. Not everybody no, 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 no. has that gift he, that Cody does that can turn anything right, right, into right, something right. that works. And that's fine. No one, you know, no one's saying, like, I mean, he has, you know, the gift of gold. But you're not going to, you're not going to get, this is, this is the thing, you're not going to, Anticipate a dream match and hope that the gimmicks sell the match. You well, want no, you want to see the best the rest, match. right? That's so high. Chris Hero and Cesaro, Ca Claudio Castagnoli. You want Chris Hero? Same difference, <laughs> same person, same capabilities versus the Young Bucks. Is it the same capability? It is. If I look at a tape of Chris Hero and I look at a tape of Cassius Ono, am I going to see the same? What's funny is that. Just asking. We are we we've swapped places because when I talk to you like this about Dean Ambrose. You Let's lose your there. damn mind. Let's not go there. The, the Ambrose just, just came back. The Ambrose just got good. Look, <laughs> we're not gonna do this, guys. You shit anyway, so all right. So you say Kings of Wrestling, Sono and Cesaro versus Young Bucks. Your dream match with either Bucks or Kenny. Oh, so we didn't ask you in the first half of the conversation? Oh, uh, so you didn't ask you about Kenny. I did say both. That's, no, you said Bucks. That's I said Bucks or said. Kenny. No, you didn't. What's your Kenny match? My Kenny match is probably going to be... Andrade Cien Almas. Oh, that is a beautiful choice. The hopeful winner of the 2018 Royal Rumble. Alright, Sir Um, What are your thoughts on Young Bucks? The elite coming to the E. And then, if what are your dream? What it, what would be your dream match between Young Bucks and someone, or Kenny or someone? So I don't want them to come to the E. That's my personal opinion. I think they should stay independent and really develop the independent circuit even more, and like get that hype, give give people more of another option. And I know they're not independent technically, but I just like them not in the E and 
giving the E that extra burn of competition that's out there. Like scaring them a little bit, just developing, just doing other stuff outside the E. Now, the rumor had that the, the, they're under new management. Yes. So New Japan has owners, has owners that aren't really the, understanding of the wrestling business. And they're think, not from the wrestling and business. And I think... They're also not fond of the gaijin. Correct. And I think one of the good things about companies like Balacol Pro and like other independent wrestling um, promotions like in New York or over, you know, the United States is that I think most people that are, are hands-on are either wrestlers themselves or they're fans of, of the product. Like everyone looks at Trips like, oh my God, oh my God, but he loves the business. Like there's no question that this man does not love the business. So I think it's always important to have um, that wrestling, per like a wrestling background when you're running a wrestling company. So, go ahead, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But no, I just prefer them being there because I just like them there. I want them to give more people that independent hope. But my thing, okay, so then Dabble's Advocate, what's left for them to do there? There's not much left, but they can think of something, they're creators. I mean, they thought of something outside of the box of them doing their own shit. They do another one. I mean, I'm pretty sure they will. But my so, but it goes back to about it being about New Japan. What is there left for them to do there? Start their own federation completely. So that has nothing to do with New Japan then. And then then, then do something else. I just love, love what they what they're. It's you like, like a, the freedom and the creativity. Yes, and and the reason why it's, it's, it's like a, an artist who done so much dope stuff independently in the science to a label. But and I mean, that could be a gift and a curse. It's, it's a not gift, and, always, and, that's, and that's what I'm saying. It's not always a negative I would love to see them on that stage, but Cody, you, you left? Well, not so much Cody. I think Cody, what my opinion would be, and then we'll go to um, Mr. Black to, for his opinion. My, my thought on it would be, I always said I see the Bucks before um, Kenny or Cody or any of them touching me. I always said that and I still stick to that. I mean, if Kenny comes, shit, that is great. But I think with the Young Bucks, I think adding that element to the tag team division, whether it's Raw or SmackDown, I think is a, I think it's a good addition. It would be it would be great. I just love them outside. Now, if they do come, if they do come, Kenny versus Seth. Yeah, that would have been mine. Kenny versus Seth would be would be phenomenal. And already, what's Seth was already teasing something like that already. He's already been tweeting it's like I'm the best in the world, and Kenny thinks he's the best in the world. So we They're should not go. Jericho, so yeah, so gonna, they should go against yeah, each other. Everybody got to chill. None of them are AJ Styles. Yo, you know, um, who's that former writer for WWE that took the picture with the um the Young Bucks and got fired? Jimmy Jacobs. Jimmy Jacobs. I am standing right next to him at the Impact show. And while he's while he's running a promo with um, Rich Swan and 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 director producing a promo, and I want to you talk mean to Rich Swain. <laughs> no, why are you doing my business like that? That's not fair. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, fine. I spelled I spelled it wrong on the on it happened. It was auto corrected. It was yeah. Bad. So I'm standing next to him. And I'm so badly want to talk to him so badly, but he's like working, and I'm marking out like he's like yeah yeah so. He's like legit producing a promo and like tell him to stop, go, stop and go. Fucking amazing. But random thought. By the way, he came he came up with the list of Jericho. Really? That's the guy that came up with it. Mad random thing. Anyways, like I said before, Kenny Omega versus Seth Rollins. About the Bucks. And, and this called Inferno came up with the thousand um the thousand and one hold list. Yeah. Oh what? Who? This called Inferno. Inferno. This called Inferno's a genius. Really? On the love. Like he's okay a genius. On the love. Um and then I know you said the Usos, but I, I think New Day. I definitely would want to. Like, New Day, the merch, and the the creativity going back and forth with them would be amazing. And that's that's my thing, because um, they move well in the crowd, and that's about it. All right, Mr. Black, your thoughts on the Elite coming to the E, and what would be some of the dream matches you would like to see between Omega and the Bucks? Do I think they'll come over to the E? Yes or no? Would I be surprised? No, because probably they probably might top out management for one more year, two more years, just to see, give them a chance. They probably make it the OGs, all them kids that you listen, let's give this new management a chance, see what they got before we jump ship. We're making good things, we're, this is, they try to make us go global. Sometimes you need somebody from the outside world who's not so much in that circle to see stuff that you may not be seeing. What if it feel like, 
them walking a certain way, like, nah, bro, walk this way, people see a little bit better. Them, them, not in the wrestling world, they can see, you know what, let's try this camera angle to get more of a crowd and stuff like that. And let's try this lights, these lights, these lights. Instead of everybody just panic, I get it, it's new. When something is new, the first couple of weeks, months, days, hours, minutes, and seconds, it's awkward because everybody's still trying to fill out each other. Do I think that it come in 2019? No, because they did too, they did so much on that level, like, oh shoot, I. So why jump shit when new management come? Like, just give it a chance. My thing with that, the new management thing, new management is good, yeah, you raised a good point, but you need a buffer between management and, and the talent. And I understand that. And this is why that how that they probably get certain people, the OGs on board. Good management would do this. They get good with the older people to understand that certain people like, all right, you good, da da da, this out of this going to mean it, let's hire make the product better. You don't know that they're doing that. We all talk about these rumors or reports. How you know that they're not over in Japan right now with certain wrestlers having dinner, having sushi? Or they're in the video game store playing Dance Dance Revolution, bonding with each other. You don't know that. We don't, we don't, we don't know oddly that. Oddly stereotypical. But, 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 Stereo we, we don't know stereotypical. that. Stereotypical. We, we don't, we don't know that. So, 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 everybody's so quick. They're gonna jump, they're gonna jump. Like you said, go back to the Austin Aries. Yo, you do certain stuff to get the little buzz, get a little bit more viewers to watch being the elite. Maybe they're gonna drop something else, this, that, and third. We, like if you said, you don't trust wrestlers, so why you keep getting fooled by these dogs? No, it's, it's not. not it's, 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 it's not even that. It's just the what they you you said that they have that you don't know, you don't know if they're bonding with them. Exactly. So the problem, the, what I'm saying with you is that if they were bonding with them, because I've had to come to a situation and had to be new management. And then how to work with a completely different team who had a, who had a, a previous team, but I knew, knew nobody. Because off the rip, you have to start that shit. That rumor should have never gotten out. It should, it should have never been a rumor about it. So that's, a, that's an issue. Let me tell you something real quick. So in my kayfabe job, right, in the, the all the years I've been there, I had six different management. So I actually bought eight, right? Eight different management. <laughs> that I've been through. Six years. Go to six years. And each time when I learned the best, sometimes you have to go with the flow with the sub and see what the, the purpose is. Because each time they switched out management, new ideas came in and other ideas didn't work out. And the one thing each of them they never did, they never sat down with everybody to see what they wanted to improve the place. They always try to bulldoze through right through it. And that's what they're the talking culture. about. That's, so, that's the rumor that's going around. Uh, 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 so everything comes uh, like this. Yo, when your top guy's contract is about to dip, you obviously gotta play the bluff though. Like, yo, we're gonna link to the E. What are you gonna present? It forces the manager to become good. It forces the manager to become, it forces the manager to try different techniques to keep certain management and certain, certain, or, certain wrestlers there. Or the management can just be like, well, fuck it, go. You, uh, but it's very, it's the, a very cash 22. But, but we are on time, so I just need you to know if they did come for whatever reason in La La Land, in the E. Who would you want to see Bucks wrestle? Honestly, I'll be very honest with you. They're just going to water them down. It's so. not about watering them down. I'm just asking you. If you were to pick someone to go against Young Bucks, who would it be? I mean, of course, of course, I'll go with Black Excellence, the Usos. Or the bigger <laughs> triple threat, the <laughs> Usos versus the New Day, the Hell and Cell. Come on, like, they can make match with that. Song, so, so Kenny, I guess Kenny, to be honest with you, I want to see them do him and Dan Bryan. If you, yo, yo, call yourself best in the world, B, try Dan Bryan out. Dan Bryan's overrated. Dan Bryan's so yeah. overrated. Damn. All right, Larry 2.0. No, he is. He's overrated. Who's your favorite guy? Who's my favorite guy? Right now. Crazy right Ramon. now? Right now. Yeah. Crazy Ramon. Crazy Ramon. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> I would, I, I truly enjoy Seth. And you don't think. And Dolph. And Dolph. Well, you were always gonna just ride Dolph to the end time, boss. Bro, I put you on with Dolph, Dolph. No, you did no, not put me on. Why do you keep saying that? Like Dolph, so that's gonna be that. Get over yourself. We're gonna move on <laughs> to our last topic, which is the rumor of this week. And is the dead man finally going to Please go. Please go. Heat? Please so go. Apparently, Please go. Please go. All right, relax. Let Please me say go. my words and then you can talk. Please go. Because you're mad. So you're mad. apparently, no, I, well, I just would need tickets to go and sell tomorrow so I can buy them. But apparently, um, WWE is working on The Undertaker headlining the 2019 Hall of Fame class. 
which as everyone knows, WrestleMania 35 will be here in our city in New York, New Jersey, um, come April 2018, and the Hall of Fame ceremony will happen the night before NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, and the Hall of Fame class um, will be presented in Barclays. Um, so it's believed that the company will be inducting The Undertaker, aka mm -hmm. Mark, um, into the Hall of Fame, finally, and that he will have his final match I put it in quotations. Final match at WrestleMania 35 at MetLife Stadium. So, gentlemen, um, my one question: If this is true, who would you like to see take his last, last in capital letters, last match with? Last match. Last match in caps. Like this is for real, for real. Shawn Michaels. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Mr. Black. Why not? Why not Shawn Michaels? You're annoying. Why not Shawn Michaels? You're always talking about this shit. No, hold on. Why not Shawn Michaels? Shawn Michaels shit. Shawn Michaels retired niggas the right way. So I might have retired Rick. Retired Rick. And you saw how beautiful and that was? was that. Did you see how beautiful that was? I love you. I'm sorry. And he super kicks him. So if every breakup relationship ended that way, would that still be cool? Yes! So Good night. So Shawn like, Michaels is amazing! Good night. Let Undertaker's last capital, last no. match. Who would you want to see? I ain't watching it. It's in not my about head, watching it. No, in my head, he ain't retired. Roman, Roman retired him. Roman did not retire Yo, him. Like, stop the bullshit. My son. The moment that that fake ass lightning shit popped down in New Orleans and Undertaker re rose, that shit was a dub. So, like that I said nigga before. didn't retire him. Like I said before. Undertaker got a whole ass hit. After that shit with Roman. So and Roman then, needs to retire him again. No. Okay. So, then that so then that's the person you answer with. Like I said before, Roman retired him. He did not. My son got butt naked in the ring, took off all his gear. He didn't get butt naked. Her. I was there. He didn't get butt naked. Now you dragging me. My son me. got butt naked in the he ring. He did not get butt back. naked. So he retired. So when that match comes on, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going outside and just talk to everyone else. That's why you are outside. Some... Can I go? Dang, can I finish? Can I go? Yeah. No. You're already outside. It's a stadium. I'm trying to tell you. I mean, can I finish my point? Like, I didn't get to even finish. All I need to know is who is the person. Like I said before, I don't care. Because you retired So then we're going to move on to our special guest. Dang. Who would you want to see Undertaker? No. Whoa. Why I got? Why I always got to put my pussy on the line? Why you talk to person about Undertaker? Because he's one of my favorites. I could do that. Just like if someone was your favorite, you would be she like, oh my God. But I'm not sitting here raffling off my pussy to the Undertaker, so relax. I'm just saying. All right. Like, so too passionate about him. Um, so like I'm surprised you didn't have this answer, especially for who you are. I think the only person that can retire the Undertaker once and for all is, that is Keith Lee. What? Keith Lee, Texas boy. Get him new big man oh, for the next sure. ten years. Oh sure. You yeah. give him a version of his last ride. Call it a day. Yo, that was impressive. All right, next. Took All right, it, took it up. Oh, he oh, ended. He level. ended. Next. That would have never I'm been. I'm telling y'all, Sean Michaels. No, it's not Sean. So uh, he, he ended Sean's Sean. career when he, he, he broke his back. That was an accident. He broke his back, so this is revenge. It's not revenge. It's revenge. revenge would have been at that mania where they wrestled, and he ended up losing. Help me. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on to our WWE recap this week. We're going to just do one up, one down, gentlemen. Um, as everyone knows, SmackDown Live had their 1,000th episode, which really was just a regular-ass show that Janelle could have went to the TNA taping for and skipped SmackDown 1,000. I'm so glad I didn't buy that ticket. Um, but all right, um, let's start with, with Mr. Black. Raw, one up, one down. One up. I'm sorry. It, was, it, it didn't excite me that much. It's just a lot of repeats, a lot of fillers. There's nothing that really stood out to me. I would say, oh, yeah, that was nothing really. So, Apollo Crews fucking up Elias. Everybody eats up me. Elias. <laughs> they ain't new. No, but I'm just saying. like, Yo, it's like, the crackhead, it's like the crackhead in your hood. If you beat him up, you get no points for that. You get zero points for that. Like, He's a crackhead. He Elias can take the beating. Elias is not a crackhead. Yo, Elias is the type of dude. He loses a thousand one matches. No one over. cares about his matches. It's all about stuff he does in the when he does a car. Come on. Yo, I'm not hype about that. Yo. I was. No. Why? Because apparently they're talking about he, Apollo might get this little good old like. But yes, yeah. and then what, 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 what's gonna yes. happen is I don't fucking know. Let's Elias is gonna him. job to him. That's exactly. what it is. Job to him. Well, I mean, okay, not wrong with it. Exactly. I'm just saying that. Exactly. Ooh. All right, so so yo, Raw didn't. It was just like another 
It was like watching a basketball game. It's good, you know, it's entertaining, but it's nothing that really stood out. That's it went from point A to point B. That's it. And my down is, yo, know, that whole awkward um, Nia Jax, Amber defeat Dan, um, Dan Brooke after they throw each other off. That was so awkward. That was very awkward to watch. Like, what and is you this know what people didn't mention to me in this comeback? I didn't get to finish. Oh. I didn't get to finish. Okay. I gave a shot. I saw my boo shining. I'm like, Tamina, I miss you, baby. Tamina's so trash in the ring. You're trash! <laughs> You're trash! Tamina's trash. All right? <laughs> Tamina's trash. I don't say nothing about Dana Brooks. I mean, I'm Dana Brooks, right? Don't disrespect Dana Brooks. All right, don't disrespect Tamina. Don't disrespect Dana Brooks. All right. All right. Sir Wilkins, one up, one down. One up, one down? Okay. It did already, because apparently. Nah, she was trash. Raw was trash. Yeah. Raw was really bad. Raw was really bad. Bobby Lashley now a heel. It was kind of cute. That's but, but it was, okay. was trash. That's Raw was okay. trash. It was a bunch of downs. Um, you want to flex? Like, try to be like you out here flex for unnecessary reasons? Come yeah. on. Wait, who's trying to flex? You know who's flexing the ring like this? I'm like, come on, Who's trying to flex? Bobby. Bobby. Okay, what we're not going to do, the both of you, is that if we replay on YouTube, on the Java Tears Podcast YouTube channel. I know. Is that both you bitches was out here praising Bobby okay. Lashley. Okay, yes, now yes. Y'all well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. I, I, I'm not OD on him. Exactly. I'm just being keep, I'm being honest. Be honest. Can I not be an honest exactly. fan? Exactly. Oh, but your honesty can? was required episodes ago. We were giving him a chance. Exactly. Nah, nah. We were criticizing him for what he did th- um, um, on Monday. You should have been criticizing Yo, him. Yo, I'm, I'm, we're not hitting him for the exactly. overall. Yo. Overall, listen. He, he makes one mistake. Exactly. We criticize exactly. it, exactly. and then we, we move on. Exactly. exactly. That so dominator. Yo, he's not using that suplex more. He's using the dominator because he's a dominator. Oh, my God. Gosh, that was awesome. Right you there. talk about you talk about Taker. Is that oh Taker? Doo, 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 doo. I am. Oh, trash ass matches he be having. Yeah, trash. Yo, and, those matches Bobby so trash. Have a trash match? No, no, never. no, no, no. You a hater now. Never. Never. You a definitely a hater. Never. Never. Barely ever. Barely. Athlete no, in the ring. Barely ever. Barely ever. Jumping over and people. Never are very I just think I'm gonna do that. If huh? he does that, he might fall under. No, he will die. Uh, exactly. He will be the dead man. Anyway, fine. Moving on to our special Yeah, nothing else? Nothing else. Nothing else. Look, look. No, they're good. Cause they I mean they out here not keeping the same energy, so it's cool. That Rhonda promo, no ups. All she said was the typical what everyone else so says. My issue with Rhonda's promo is that it didn't feel it wasn't her. It wasn't her? Cause I feel like Rhonda isn't really the trash talker. Like she I think in I think in in the octagon, her moves and how she wrestles speaks for herself. She's never she's never been a talker. Like let's just Well no, she might not talk she might not talk. So her garbage. delivery in it, I just didn't feel like it was Have you her. ever watched like her behind the scene interviews? All she does is talk trash. But I still like it just felt so forced. Like just That's because it was written for her. Yeah. And that's also my other issue Don't is that like everyone knows John Cena door. Everybody went crazy on the I'm like yo like, it was what she said. It wasn't how but the thing is like I've always said this. My only issue with Ronda Rousey is that she's not charming. She has no charisma. You need to watch interviews outside the EB. Like, That's yo, what I'm trying to you, say. yo, you watch USA the Stupid? Yo, hilarious, B. She's no, no, no I know America. America. The thing, I've always followed Ronda, and she's never been charming. And, 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 and the thing, yeah. you, no, you, 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 she's not that charming. And the I'm thing not, about I'm it, not she's, girl, she's, like, she's, she talks because. It's a regular thing. Let me ask you a question. So what's charm is to you? Yeah, what's what's like what's charm? Name a female that's that who comes from her background is charming. That's the point. That's the point. <laughs> like that Even um, exactly. what's it, what's her face? Um, with, with the face. What's her name? Um, with the face. Oh, the one that likes thick dick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? What? Yeah, she does. She does. She does. She does. Like what's her name? Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler. She's more charming she than Ronda. Look like slick dick. Okay, oh, but the thing about she, she's more charming than she's more charming than her. Now another thing that that's, that that has charisma and charm. Charlotte has charm. She's not from the same background. But, but, but I'm just saying, you want to talk about no yeah, people no, came that, from the no, same background. That's, so. that's the point. No, that's, 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 that's what I'm talking about. What's charming? Talk about. That's what I'm talking about. What's charming? You What's charisma on the mic? I'm talking about this way. The reason why that I don't count Charlotte's conversation, I said come from Ronda's background. Right, but Charlotte Ronda, Shayna Baszler's is better than her. No, no. Okay, and you name her, I was like, okay, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah because Shayna Baszler's is better than her. Everything everything that Ronda says looks like I just read over a piece of paper and I'm going to say it. it now, when you're talking about an interview that she does, that 
that's different because it's off the top of that's what she feels. And you, know that, um, you know that you yelling doesn't make your point better, right? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying what, what it is. It just gets passionate. You want to say what, what it is because you can yell and I, nobody said anything about it. So what, what I'm trying to say is that she doesn't do anything when, it, when it's scripted because we all know her shit is rated. So if you're going to do something and write and come out with it, I don't want to hear, uh, the only door that you knocked down was John Cena's door. Pause. Because that's how it looks like it was written. Yeah, so like the it was sentence, written. and then it looks like, you know, where it says, like, in parentheses, pause. I mean, and then like I said before, I know she's not, I, I'm not the biggest Ronda fan. Everybody knows that. But I do give her respect at the fact, like you said, it all goes back to our point from episode season one, stop scrimming everybody so heavily. But the thing like, she I'm needs it. Scripting everybody, so I mean, she's not that. She's not that. Look at the that greatest way. example, Leo. It. Vince got they. Vince has an ear in Leo, and you couldn't even tell. But how do you know that? How do he he say everything that Vince is saying? Hundred percent. What if like Vince says, "Yo, talk about his body," and Leo he trusts him. That's he's the guideline. Him, he's giving him guidance in the ear and telling him certain things to say. But yeah, but what if he just but gives him the guideline know. that he says, "Talk about his muscles," and then Leo Rush be like, "Oh, my son Bobby, he looking jack. But Check thing, him out." But the you thing see? is, Vince he's is telling him how to do that versus. But you don't I, know. She wouldn't know. I I think you guys are being overly critical on a promo from someone who debuted in March. But then, oh, that's not me. You're that's overly because a promo I, 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 in because a promo you put the in title wrestling, on her. a promo in because she's legitimately the most dangerous woman in that locker room. But then, if you're gonna do that, she you gotta have you you gotta have the backbone to actually present. Like you gotta cut a promo. Like you can't say here. She, she's you trying. Can't sit here what is and it? Throw a title October. On so. And be like April, Let's May, June, out. July, August, September, October. She's. Been working on promo for seven months. Listen, listen. In comparison to people who've been doing it for years. I, under, I understand that. But I still can be critical on you and I still can tell you to do you should do it. I said you're being overly critical. Oh, it, it, even if I've been overly critical, it's still it's still you're gonna get that and get better. I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah, you're shitty. Thing. She's just gonna keep get better. better because I've said that she's gotten she's better. Gonna get better. I've said that. Right. I've, I've said she's gotten better. But I'm not hyped about her saying that. It was a great line. It did get the internet going. It did do something. But at the same time, you could do better. I think you need to be more you charming. You always do. It takes like 10 years before you're a legit promo. Yes. And, and, yes. and I understand that. Yes. But get not, better. Not everybody has the gift of gab, No, bro. but the thing, the, the, the and thing that's of, fine. That's fine. But you're the golden but child. You have to, yeah, you have you to You're the understand. golden child of WWE right now. You have to right understand now. the standard that they're putting but that's, on. You gotta, but, you gotta deliver. But, but so, so, so hypothetical. If LeBron James and uh, what is the chick from the man? I can't remember. From what? If LeBron James and the best WNBA player have a baby, Candace Parker. Candace Parker. If LeBron James and Candace Parker have a baby, are you gonna judge that baby's basketball ability seven months into its life? That's a baby, though. No, no, She's no, a no, baby. No, no. She's a baby. She's a grown no. ass woman. I like on a promo, on like a promo, like she's a baby. I like that promo. Like this woman, like this, woman, this, this, woman, no, this woman, this woman, no, this woman, since they, this so woman, when you sat no, here, you said no, that no, no, in her MMA no, 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 this she was in her promos, no, that's different. This woman, that's since the age of four, has only been built to destroy other women, not sit there and sell a match. And this what are you talking about? She sold matches on UFC. She sold the match on UFC because she was destroying other yeah. women. It she wasn't about you selling. You just said she was doing promos on. No, I said stuff. outside I said interviews. interviews are different. Interviews. When she's being like, you agree, she's being natural. Yeah. It flows better. Yeah. When she's I, being directed, it's tough. Man, you can't use that then. You can't. But you have to. No, you can't. You have to try to justify selling the tickets because she's the champ. You can't it's do a that. growing process. So she's growing is, on national TV. Not everybody does that. So my question. How is, it took The Rock 13 months to become The Rock. Oh no, that's fine. But my okay. So my question to you is: Should W should WWE even put the title on? Her? Yes. Why? Because she's selling tickets. Is she really? Yes. She might not be selling tickets to the to the degree it's the UFC because those fans it's probably didn't about, come over. No, I wouldn't compare UFC tickets. But she to me, is, let me she's you, legitimate. Let me ask you a question. You mentioned LeBron, right? Mm -hmm. LeBron's first in the league because I love basketball. Mm -hmm. LeBron's first in the league, phenomenal numbers. Okay. Right? Yeah. If he had a shitty first year, would that have been a problem? He didn't make the playoffs. 
No, but think about he made the All Star game. Rookie of the year. Make the but, I mean, but he didn't he make the playoffs. Of the year. No, 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 his numbers phenomenal. Okay. Phenomenal. First year in the league. Uh huh. Just gets to the league, right? Uh huh. Now he's on a bigger stage. Okay. If he had a bad year, would it have been a problem? No, because Jordan's first year wasn't that great. But I'm talking about LeBron. LeBron's king. LeBron king was, 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 no was, was, was king. 16? No, was 16 no, 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 on the cover no. of Sports Illustrated. Now, 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 I'm about to really school you. Now look at this, right? I'm a diehard Knicks fan, right? Yeah. Are you a Knicks fan? Yes, sir. Look at, um, Trash. Look at, look at, um, look at my son, Frankie Smokes. <laughs> Correct? Okay. Frankie Smokes came from basketball overseas. Yeah. Correct? He's, how old is he? 19, right? Yeah. His first year wasn't that great, yes. right? Yeah. They said, what is he doing in the offseason? And the coach is saying that he's doing all the little stuff to improve himself in the offseason. So his second year, you give rookies a little bit leverage because they have stuff to And I adjust. understand. And I understand. But no, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Everybody develops differently. So you cannot put everybody on the same as that scale and make them develop. I, I see what you're saying when it yeah. comes to LeBron, right? Right. But, but he has been de designated to go in terms of basketball since day one, right? Yes. But now here's the difference, right? How long did it take for him to become a social activist? How long did it take for him to start really doing stuff in his community? That's not it took, no, it took years. It, 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 didn't, years. it didn't come it, off the job. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with Ron and not being charged, but I'm gonna say it every time. That's fine. Because it needs to get better. It does. Because you, you think about it, you're the face of the women's division. Yes. So that means that are you doing the extra shit on the outside? She's trying, dude. But how do we know that? Because of the, what I, because you know what? You know what? When it wasn't scripted. There was one time I was like, what the fuck are they doing with her? And I think about, I even got a nigh about this shit. Because when they did that, like, fake E, like, they, they were coming at each other and she had the belt, like, yo, we're, we're, we're going to go up against each other. It wasn't scripted. I but, know. What do I know for the most I part? Know. Because it's, it, didn't, it didn't seem like, you didn't know what the fuck to say. But wait, you just went from Austin Aries having a work that wasn't on camera to something that was on camera on ETV and WWE TV and you're saying it's a oh, shoot? Oh, no, no. Austin shit was on TV. Yeah. But this is what I'm trying to the say, though. Twitter. Yeah, like if no, if, it's it, on, it, Kevin Nash says it, if it's on camera, Johnny, it's a work. Johnny Impact went on fucking TMZ and was talking about that shit. That shit. Another outlet to sell the show. That shit was a whole different. Exactly. Movie. It might be a work. Cause exactly. TMZ be exactly. No, but what I'm saying, I'm just saying, like if you're if you're gonna go in that direction, my thing with Rhonda is. Is that granted? She's not gonna be in a WWE superstar overnight. I, I completely understand. I don't know. That. Not Kurt she's not gonna be a WWE that. promo and, and overnight. And not Kurt Angle is Kurt Angle. Oh um, no, Kurt Angle not. killed his first year. My not everybody's Kurt Angle. Stop putting everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody, not everybody, not everybody talk, is Randy Orton. Oh, no, no, no. Not okay, everybody no, no, okay. is Brock Lesnar. So, wait, 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 like if we're gonna talk about niggas' rookies' career, let's okay. talk about it. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about it, right? You claim Edge is better than HBK. They kept him quiet for a whole year. How long was oh, it before he was a promo? They, the you talk about the, you talk about some of the greatest of all time. Bret Hart had to put shades on to hide the fact that he was so nervous. He was looking everywhere when cutting the promo. Oh, People own, own take time I'm to. I'm not gonna go into that. People <laughs> take time to develop a promo if you don't have that. the gift. And, and on top of that, and on top of that, this way. Now let's look at it a side of wrestling, a side of mixed art. She's an attractive woman. So all her life, people are uh, people are awkward around her. So when you're attractive women, a lot of attractive women are awkward because they people just awkward to just give them stuff. So that has, is your opinion. I just need you to be clear on that. Once again, but no, I, I see what you're saying. But let me say, but just get better. That's my opinion. Just, yes, just, just I agree. Better. Just get it. But the thing about it, you're gonna be on a higher pedestal because you're the champion. And, and that's more shit on you. Ten times, a hundred times more. And you're on the higher pedestal. That's all I'm saying. Right. She needs. To, she needs to be more charismatic. And there's, okay. There's just a certain level of things that if you so are you saying are you saying that are you saying your your like threshold for her is going to be short. What do you mean? Like you're not gonna tolerate it too much longer? Exactly. That's because what you're saying. That's, that's my thing because because of what they, of, of, of the height of the pencil that they, they they put you on. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Now let's 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 take a look at who's the universal champ. Roman. Has he still got? Has he got his promo down? No. No. It's been six, seven years. Oh, but the threshold is going to be. But, 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 but this is what I'm saying. I don't think Roman should be champion Every, right now. No, but, but Roman six years ago <laughs> is not the Roman is now. That now. He got it way takes better time. Promo. It does take time. Look at and I under, and I under, and I understand that. I'm not saying. But in the first six Ronda months, Roman get, get the title. And boom, she's going to be great. Oh, you I'm forget the first six months he was in training, and after he was with the Shield, maxed around Seth. 
MD. I understand, but, no, but was fine. he champion? Was he the face of the of, of WWE? He wasn't the face of the company. No, but they that's the difference. They so built him worse. that way quick, and, and they did they, build. He they, were they. They built they. him up quick. They did build yeah. him up quick. I understand that, yeah. but at the same time, he wasn't the face of the company. As soon as he got in there, like you're taking somebody, and I understand there's a lot of pressure on her. So, so who's the face of the company when it comes to the women? Ronda. Take her out. Who's the face of the company when it comes to the women? Charlotte. Okay. Are either one of them great promos? Charles better than Ronda. I, I can run faster than a seventh month old. How long did it take for him to become a social activist? How long did it take for him to start really doing stuff in his community? That's not it took, no, it took years. It's, it's, it, 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 didn't, years. it didn't come it's off the job. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with Ronda not being charged, but I'm gonna say it every time. That's fine. Because it needs to get better. It does. Because you, you think about it, you're the face of the women's division. Yes. So that means that are you doing the extra shit on the outside? She's trying, dude. But how do we know that? Because of the, what I, because you know what? You know what? When it wasn't scripted. There was one time I was like, what the fuck are they doing with her? And I think about, I even got a nigh about this shit. Because when they did that, like, fake E, like, they, they were coming at each other and she had the belt, like, yo, we're, we're, we're gonna go up against each other. It wasn't scripted. I but, know. What do I know for the most I part? Know. Because it's, it, didn't, it didn't seem like, you didn't know what the fuck to say. But wait, you just went from Austin Aries having a work that wasn't on camera to something that was on camera on ETV and WWE TV, and you're saying it's a oh, shoot? Oh, no, no. Austin shit was on TV. Yeah. But this is what I'm trying to the say, though. Twitter. Yeah, like if no, if, it's it, on, it, Kevin Nash it, says it, if it's on camera, Johnny, it's a work. Johnny Impact went on fucking TMZ and was talking about that shit. That shit. Another outlet to sell the show. That shit was a whole different. Exactly. Whole it might be a work. Cause exactly. TMZ be exactly. Yeah. No, but what I'm saying, I'm just saying, like if you're if you're gonna go in that direction, my thing with Ronda is. Is that granted? She's not gonna be in a WWE superstar overnight. I, I completely understand. I don't know. That. Not Kurt she's not gonna be a WWE that. promo and, and overnight. And not Kurt Angle is Kurt Angle. Oh um, no, Kurt Angle not. killed it his first year. My not everybody's Kurt Angle. Stop putting everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody, not everybody, not everybody talk, is Randy Orton. Oh, no, no, no. Not okay, everybody no, no, okay. is Brock Lesnar. So, wait, 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 like if we're gonna talk about niggas' rookies' career, let's okay. talk about it. Okay, so yeah, let's talk about it, right? You claim Edge is better than HBK. They kept him quiet for a whole year. How long was oh, it before he was a promo? They, the you talk about the, you talk about some of the greatest of all time. Bret Hart had to put shades on to hide the fact that he was so nervous. He was looking everywhere when cutting kind of promo. Oh, People own, own take time I'm to. I'm not going to go into that. People <laughs> take time to develop a promo if you don't have that. the gift. And, and on top of that, and on top of that, this way. Now let's look at it a side of wrestling, a side of mixed art. She's an attractive woman. So all her life, people are uh, people are awkward around her. So when you're attractive women, a lot of attractive women are awkward because they people just awkward to just give them stuff. So that has, is your opinion. I just need you to be clear on that. Once again, but no, I, I see what you're saying. But let me say, but, but, just get better. That's my opinion. Just, yes, just, just I agree. Better. Just get it. But the thing about it, you're gonna be on a higher pedestal because you're the champion. And, and that's more shit on you. Ten times, a hundred times more. And you're on a higher pedestal. That's all I'm saying. Right. She needs to. She needs to be more charismatic. And there's, okay. There's just a certain level of things that if you so are you saying are you saying that are you saying your your like threshold for her is going to be short. What do you mean? Like you're not gonna tolerate it too much longer? Exactly. That's because what you're saying. That's, that's my thing because because of what they, of, of, of the high of the pencil that they, they they put you on. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Now let's 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 take a look at who's the universal champ. Roman. Has he still got? Has he got his promo down? No. No. It's been six, seven years. Oh, but the threshold is going to be. But, 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 but this is what I'm saying. I don't think Roman should be champion Every, right now. No, but, but Roman six years ago <laughs> is not the Roman is now. That now. He got it way takes better time. Promos. It does That's take time. Look at and I under, and I under, and I understand that. I'm not saying. But in the first six Ronda months, you're going to get the, the title. And boom, she's going to be great. Oh, you I'm forget the first six months he was in training, and after he was with the Shield, Max around Seth. And Dean. I understand, but no, like, was fine. he champion? Was he the face of the, of, of WWE? He wasn't the face of the company. No, but they that's the difference. They so built him worse. that way quick. And, and they did they, build, he they, were, they, they built they. him up quick. They did yeah. build him up quick. I understand that. Yeah. But at the same time, he wasn't the face of the company. As soon as he got in there. Like, you're taking somebody, and I understand there's a lot of pressure on her. So, so who's the face of the company when it comes to the women? Rhonda. Take her out. Who's the face of the company when it comes to the women? Charlotte. Okay, are either one of them great promos? Charles better than Ronda. 
I, sh I can run faster than a seventh month old. True though. He, he does have a point. You're gonna stop using babies and kids for it to be long. No, but I think Charles like, one of the better ones on the mic uh, in the women's division. Right? Say it again. Charles one of the better ones on the mic in the women's division. I, I okay, but again, what I'm trying to say is, you, 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 you it's seven months. You gotta give her time. I understand. I that. love that the fact, the fact that you're calling her out, and I love the fact everybody should be calling her out. That's the only way she's so getting get get better. better. I have no, I'm not right. hating. I'm not hating. But her. you're telling me this promo on Monday wasn't better than her promo six months ago? Oh, she still needs to get better. Royal Rumble, yeah. Okay, okay. She still needs to get better. Right. I, I, I just say she needs to be more charming. It's, That's it. Okay, let's. You know what? Before we move to SmackDown 1000, let's just all agree that there is a step forward. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I called it enough. If it, uh, it's a, if it's a step if it's, step it's if it's progress step up. if it's, it's progress it's an up. It's a step up. Motherfuckers agree with each other. I mean, like, shit. I mean, like, I don't like you anyway, Because he finally got a tag team partner because he feels like me and the boys against him. So. I didn't say all of that. You did. You did. Why try to mix this a drama, son? You did. Smackdown. So we can get to the boys stuff. Smackdown 1000. Gentlemen. Trash. I didn't watch it. And of course, you didn't need to. The Rock was in there. You know what the fuck I got from The Rock? A fucking tweet. Well, that's The Rock, so that's how SmackDown 1000 was. Figure a, something out. That's a Figure something out. Figure something out. My one up was. Oh, man, so. The, besides Rey Mysterio returning and looking like he's like 21 years old in the ring again, that's impressive. But I will say the randomness of the Usos versus Danny Bryan and AJ Styles, to me, was really good because it was different. It was the opening match for SmackDown 1000. It was technically really the best tag team on SmackDown that's built that brand versus who they say is the best on SmackDown currently. World. Which is, you know, debatable. So. You don't like AJ Styles? No, I love AJ. All right, so what's your up? That was it, Usos. All right, what's your down? My down? The rest of the show? No, fucking, <laughs> yo, low key, Batista giving us a 20 minute speech about everybody in evolution that niggas already knew about, but then wanted to plant a seed about him versus Triple H. But what's the last time you heard of Batista? I didn't want to hear Batista. That's why it's dead. Because you don't like Batista. Correct. What he did to you? He's just not my guy. He's not my company. You don't even know him. But I, I know the wrestler. I watch wrestling. I, I don't understand. You, so you think, hold on, wait, time, Your time. issue is you think I'm you think I'm attacking the Chris man Hero's himself. trash, but He's trash. But the gimmick your is trash. Your barometer is the, the gimmick is trash. Okay, okay, okay. I'll give you that. In ring, very decent, very solid. But the gimmick is trash, and we all can agree to that. When it came to Batista, he just was never. He to me, he was like Roman. He's just not my cup of tea. Oh, I never connect. The thing with when you're a wrestling fan, you need to essentially connect with the wrestler. Period. The reason why I've always liked guys like Kevin Owens, why I've always liked Joe, why I've always liked AJ, like there is a journey to that. And I relate to, I, I have a connection to that. I never connected to Batista. So to me, it was just like, this is just another big nigga. Here we go again. Cool story. And then he went to go do movies, try to be The Rock, not The Rock. But trying. He wasn't trying to. He even said that to you. He's like, he just did his own thing. Yeah, okay. Like, how do I have my key? He would say that. that. What's the rest of go to Hollywood? Try to be like The Rock. My nigga, he's trying to get this back. Like, like The Rock. You literally. No, you, no, literally, you can't. If, yeah. if that's yeah, the yeah. case, everybody's trying yeah. to be Roddy Piper. Exactly. Correct. I, I agree with that. Not, there's no way. So trying. you're sitting here and saying the highest paid actor in the world, Dwayne Johnson, is trying to be Roddy Piper? He's not trying to be Piper per se. I'm saying I'm saying that wrestlers like Piper like Hogan, even though I don't like Hogan. Definitely open up that door for Hollywood for wrestlers to have that. that so how is outlet. it bad that Batista went that route? I didn't say that was a bad thing. I'm just saying. But I you don't, insinuated the trying day, to be the Rock. So that's I don't the like case. Batista. So in that's the, the case. Everybody tried to like Hogan. Because Hogan started it. No, no Hogan Piper, Piper was. Piper. Piper. Oh, they fine now. Okay, correction. Everybody I'm about to say, like, if we're, we're going to straight well, back. Hogan became more mainstream. Yeah, so, right. But, so like, but he wasn't just like how Rosa Parks way. wasn't the first person to get off the bus. I'm Hogan was not the first person to be like. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. There's more important so, things to talk about. Just want to talk about your show. Bro. Of course, I just want to talk about my show. Oh, my ups. Was the, was the Usos. Mm -hmm. And my um, mini up was Rey Mysterio. All right. Mini up, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> and our truth needs to be unprotected all, at all times. Oh. <laughs> my man opened up SmackDown 1000. Yeah, so he needs to be taken oh. care of. And had Vince McMahon dancing hey, in the ring. Dance break. Hey, quick. <laughs> Former NWA champion. Um, actually, wow. my up 
was the Charlotte Becky Lynch uh, moment at the cutting edge. I felt like that was a great use of using Edge. He basically telling the story like, yo, listen, don't be like me. Don't be the, the ones doing all that. You look like your champion on these walls and nobody that's to celebrate with you. And she was just like, yeah, you're right. I don't, I don't like myself. I love myself. And the fact that he told her, yo, get on my ring. Get on my ring. That's how you do it. That's how you show oh, it. Oh, the part. Don't hit your neck while you're, while you're coming out. Oh. <laughs> that was, that was way better than Ronda saying, oh, you know, yeah. oh, you're not gonna see. But, but she's a better promo. She's Thank a better you. promo. And my down, Ashley, was Big Show turning here for the billion time? For the eighty-two Big Show came back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he came back. The bar. But I how did he chose? He helped the bar. He helped the bar. Got him, got The final five, five so, times. So wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. So now what they're trying to do is have Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady in WWE. Yep. Is that what they're doing? I think Pretty so. much. That's it. And now my biggest doubt. I'm looking like everybody cheer. I'm looking like. No, wow. Big Show. Like, did you get tired of just being floppy? Like, yo, you probably like a real like. Like he's probably like real like no, he's to play but he doesn't right like now. it either though. Yeah, he's, he he's, he's, he's gone. He he's gone. He hates going back. Because and like forth. it makes no sense. It like make sense. yo, because he's a com- no. The thing about he's a company man though. Yeah, he he's a company it, man. But he's a company man. He's he, like he realizes it's easier to do it when you're seven foot and five hundred pounds. Like what yeah. else can you really do yeah. at, this, right. at this stage of the game? Right. So what's the question of the week? All right, this week's question. We're gonna make it really quick so we can talk about someone's amazing show. Thank you. Um, what attributes make a wrestler a superstar? Charisma. That simple. Charisma. Oh. I would say charisma. Charisma. A superstar is what we're talking about. Right. Yeah, charisma. Okay. Living, able to transition yourself, who you really are, and able to amplify a thousand. Able to be yourself in the ring. As far as that includes promo. How you move, how you wrestle. I think all that culminates to just when a wrestler is able to transition his attitude, how he is in real life, and end fight ten times. I call that the it factor. I don't know if we do that. There's a better word for that. Charisma. charisma. <laughs> I think that he meant charisma as far as just speaking wise. No, no, no it's okay, amplification yeah. of everything it's like you yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I think that how that's so the most point I agree. I say the charisma because there's wrestlers that who could probably talk on the mic. Hell's he frozen like, over. Mm. Hell has to be frozen over. Yeah. Hell has to be. We, we've been on. Because you guys are on the <laughs> today. We are so lucky today. All right, so Wilkins, oh. what attributes make a super? He's going to say squats. <laughs> That's what up. No, but the thing about it. You said muscles. What I say about Ronda. What? We're making a joke, guys. No, 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 what I say about Ronda. She's not charming to you. Exactly. But charming she's charismatic. Is- Mm. She is. She Not is. There's you. some no. There's something about her walking down in Piper's jacket with that, that music that the crowd pops. Yeah, and the fact that how that one moment I realized that she has that charisma just needs to tone. She needs to tone it. When like when she went up to Triple H, she was just like, "Ooh, you felt the intensity." Yeah, she's like, "You can get." That's it. when the match turned for the better. She was like, "Nah." Every time she does that, <laughs> nah, B, you about to get it. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching a hood shake back in the hood. Okay, no, can I finish? Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, I apologize. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. You get time really to we'll cut you off. You get time to we'll cut you off and so cut that shit out. No, bro. No, 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 no. You get tired. You get tired. So I'm gonna finish. Let me finish. Okay. Like I said, all it takes is one word. Somebody got time a couple times. No, but no, no. I meant like your answer. It's one word. No, everybody got to amplify what they want to say. He definitely just said charisma. Yeah, and like the he might dropped it. Alright, fine. It's charisma. Let's go. Mine would be, before we talk about this phenomenal show and give some predictions on some matches that we have going on. Um my attribute innovative. Innovation is good. For me, Innovative Pro I Sunday, think, October 21st, Ridgeville Park, New Jersey. <laughs> Tickets on sale. Right How now. awful was that? <laughs> but um, for me, um, for a wrestler to be a superstar, I think innovation is a crucial um, component to their repertoire in a sense. Because I think a person that can, you know, take a match, just like, so the greatest example would be TLC, where you get three tag teams. They were going at it, and they all took it to the next level by creating a match like tables, tables, ladders, and chairs, and being innovative and, and being creative and doing that. So to me, that is what a superstar is all about. Can I ask you a question, though? No. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, if someone does a 730 degree splash, pops up and it has a deer in the, uh, deer in the headlights look, is that move going to be more effective? Or if they do half that, they do a 450, they get up and the crowd's behind them. What's better? The 450 because... And what, what is that? Personal. You just want to be... All right, show! No. Show, let's go show. Actually, you should tell us about Ah, this is in no particular order because so there's a bunch of them. So wait, before the owner of Battle Club Pro tells us Sorry. the bar, because he has changed the battery. So before we get into predictions and talking about this amazing stacked card for this weekend, um, I'm going to let the owner of Battle Club Pro give his, you know, little two second cheap plug about his amazing Gee. event. This It's his figure of speech about his amazing event this weekend. So those are on live feed, tune in, and those that are watching on the YouTube channel, um, please tell a friend to tell a friend. So share, get away. share, share, share. Tickets available at battleclubpro.com. It'll you click the link, it'll take your brown paper tickets. There's still a very few front row left. General admission is left. VIP option gives you a free raffle ticket to get a signed axe from Jimmy Havoc and some of the roster. Ooh. Yes. Um, you also get early access. You also get an in-ring photo op with our Battle Club Icons champion, Harlow O'Hara. So that's VIP. Um, you want that How much of those tickets? I wish. What? <laughs> VIP is just five bucks more than, than the regular ticket. So, so the regular ticket is how much? So, so front row is 30. VIP front row is 35. Uh, general admission is 20. General admission VIP is 25. All right. So Not that, that much. Really, yeah. really affordable. Yes. Super affordable. And, and you know, it's, it's in Ridgefield Park, New Jersey. 20 minutes over the GWB. Ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to talk about this two years in the making of oh an amazing goodness. show. Yeah. Uh, do you want a backstory or should I just go into this? Um, give me a smidge of a backstory. Like, tell me and those that are watching, um, your journey in I'm like sorry, yeah. less than a hundred words. But tell me your journey, um, <sighs> with Battle Club Pro starting two years ago. You alright? Yeah, this is me. Okay. Sure. It's kind of racist, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Aristide. No, Carlos Aristi is the founder of Battle Club Pro. He opened it up two years ago. Uh, this year and the end of last year was a lot of transition. He was turning it over to me. He's always told me this was built for me every day. I thank him for the journey that I'm on right now. So I'm currently the primary owner. Uh, I have my brothers in arms, 19 years of friendship as investors. He's still the founder. We still talk about everything. He just took a step back because he had his beautiful second child. Uh, Riley is a gorgeous baby girl. Um, oh, so yeah, it went from me being commentary to joining his production team to booking the shows and now I'm in charge. Everything is uh, under my umbrella and I'm going to take it and make it much better than it already is because that's my mission right now. He surplanted it, he cemented it as something that is a viable independent wrestling option and my mission in life is to supersede that and make it incredible. I mean, as I always say, wrestling has brought so many different people in my life you know, such as yourself and Mr. Wilkins and Mr. Black and everybody. But I, but Battle Club Pro for me is always going to have a special piece besides you being primary owner and my dear good friend. But your show last summer um, with the British Strong Style, I mean, I have a very, because of that show, I have a very, very good and dear friend of mine, Angie, who actually was from Chicago, flew from Chicago to come to your show in Brooklyn, in your hood. And we've really been friends ever since then, so I'm always thankful of wrestling because it has just brought people together in a different in a different light, in a different way, and I think that it's just a part of life. So I always say, you know, Battle Club Pro is just that go-to indie promo in the Tri-State area. So, am I doing this prediction for myself? Okay, I'm with the shit. Oh, wow. That even, You get like exclusive. I, I, there's something special I was gonna announce tonight for you, man. But see, you fucking it up. Producing the last, last segment. All right, oh. Jimmy Jacobs. Fine. <laughs> all right, give me, yeah, give me a match. All right, so. so we're gonna run down the. Do you want to do predictions for all of them, or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're gonna uh, first match. I'm gonna announce. It's not in any particular order. Is CPA versus Puff the abominable CPA versus Puff of the Buffalo Brothers from upstate New York? We got. I'm gonna go with CPA on this one. He does. He do your taxes. 
Yeah. See, that's and that's, on time. That's 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 conflict of interest. I mean, I'm sorry. You just you know. Uh, be what it is. Super swole four way uh, match in honor of super big, swole. <laughs> of big, big swole Ariel Monroe. We're gonna have the Man of Steel Mike Verna versus Jersey Muscle Steve Gibke versus the Iron Demon Shane Mercer versus Rich Homie Juice AJ Gray. Oh man, this is just. I'm gonna go with Mike Verna. Mike Verna, Brooklyn boy. Yeah. I guess the man right there. Tell me, Brooklyn, stand up. Uh, this match was announced not too long ago. It, I drafted four unique tag teams: the Battle Club Pro Draft Fatal Four Way, where we're gonna see the Salty Dog Joey Ace versus Divine Devin Driscoll. The retrosexual Anthony Green versus special dark Sugar Dunkerton. Okay. Home, my, my, my good friend walking the left hand path, the original gothic gangster, Trevor Eon versus, I mean, you were super in love with this man, the revolutionary Darius Lockhart. Yes, that's, 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 that's my guy. That's, 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 that's the, I, and I told him this, and when I told him this, his smile just like went nuts, but. There was a bunch of the, the brothers and sisters when he came out. They threw up that fist, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't look like you guys, but I felt that 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 really touched me. That, that was the whole me. reason that I brought him up. I love that man. Um, and then we're gonna have PB Smooth, my homie, Mister Fresh to Death, tagging up with the sexy cannibal Savannah Evans. Ooh, so we have so a little intergender in there. Intergender in there. Yeah. I love that episode. <laughs> She's just tall. She's no, she's um, Fine. she's she's awesome. a beast in the ring. Yeah, I was say. <laughs> Who you got? Okay. Um, oh my god, this is such a hard choice. I know. Because Darius is in it. Savannah's in it. Um, I'm trying to come up with names for everybody. So I know it has to be unique. Um, for the first one, I'm, I'm just I'm gonna go with my girl Savannah. Savannah and PB. Savannah and PB. Call the corner and the cannibal. I have to, yeah, I have to go with my girl because you know hashtag Black Excellence, you know, so we gotta support. Uh, right then you have the Hitman for Hire, Mr. Grimm versus the Bayonne Badass Dan Moff. Oh, I mean, man, it's so you hard. talk about. This, if this match doesn't knock the building down, that is a miracle of God. Because, like, for me, I've seen Grimm wrestle at so many other different shows, not including yours, and I think he's just a talent he's to incredible. guy. incredible. And, of course, like, the Triple G damn math. Like, he's who legend. does not love Legend, him? legend, legend. Um, but I'm going to have to go with Grimm. I, I have to always say, wow. I mean, old school is great, but, I mean, you got an up-and-coming guy like the Grimm. You gotta give him the W. Um, so this next match, you gotta, you can tag him, Mr. Uh, Eighty Thousand Followers on Twitter, Dan Reichert, Dirty <laughs> Dan, has procured the talents of the main state posse, the Danger Kid, Alexander Lee, and Aiden Agro to face Tasha Steele. Team Steele's is simply Tasha Steele and Davian, uh, New England's new nightmare. She's not America's sweetheart. We all know how badass Tasha Steele is. She won the Dan Reichert Invitational, even though. He's not what he had, what was in mind when he thought about a contracted wrestler. So um, he said something disrespectful to her, got kicked in the nuts, and now we have this match. Now, isn't this guy your new commissioner? He's my new commi commissioner. He, he, he came to me. Your new commissioner me. is talking shit. Yeah, he came to me, and we had a meeting, and he understood that I crafted most of this card mm -hmm. already. So he was like, I would like one match as your new commissioner, and I want to set a challenge. And Tasha was on it, you know. She was. She was I'm sorry, I gotta go with Tasha. I, I Tasha mean, Steele, and, and those that are watching, if you have not YouTube, Miss Tasha Steele from New York. Now I wrote this right out a certain way for a reason. PB Smooth, Mr. Grimm, and Tasha Steele all have custom themes made by Antoine Montezzi Moore, who is the composer for Impact Wrestling's music. Okay. So you're going to have three Montezzi specials on Impact on Battle Club Pro. This man writes and works for Impact and he's done music for us and he's going to continue to do music for us. Homie, you're awesome. I can't wait to link up. You the man's got doing some huge heavy things. Hitters. Yeah, the man's done huge things, so I love the fact that his music is going to be showcased at my show. Awesome. All right, what's the next match? The Lynch Mob versus the Diamond Dogs. That's really <laughs> So, the so Diamond scary. Dogs have been crazy impressive every time they've been at Battle Club Pro. Mm -hmm. The Lynch Mob was supposed to debut in March. Joey 
was hurt unfortunately so he couldn't make it but since then joey's been on 205 live matt's been on smackdown twice and yeah it's gonna be great graham and luke the the black diamond industry's finest they're just gonna go at it you know i'm gonna see the diamond i gotta throw my diamonds up right? <laughs> i'm going with those guys we're gonna go from that to uh, some more muscle where we're gonna have the end, Odinson and Paro versus Federated, Mick Drake, now, and Brute Pants Light. Federated has me huge, I think, sounds all yeah. over the New York and tri state area indie scene. So I think, definitely think the W will go with them there. They're a hard crew. Well, this match is for the Full Impact Pro Tag Team Championships that the end currently hold. Oh, so, so if we might see, see a new title champions. change, you know? And I'm all about a title change. But I mean, Let's give props, Odinson and Paro. The end. They're going to be touring Japan. Paro is going to be on NWA Impact the next uh, NWA. Excuse me, the NWA show the next day, the same show that Cody is going to be facing Nick Aldis in the rematch. That is major. Paro's been killing it lately. He's all over social media. He is all about the pride that it is to be who he is, representing the LGBT community. We love him. We're so pro. LGBT were anti-discrimination in all facets. That's why people like Lockhart and Paro are on the card. We hate discrimination. We will discriminate against discrimination. That's right. You always gotta... <laughs> got the producers in the back. Here we go. Here we go. I'm like, shut up. All right, so now... After this, we're going to go into the heavy hitters. These five matches I'm going to announce are main event level quality themselves. Okay. Let's go... Effie versus Maria Manic. I'm not sure how much Effie you guys know. This man is everything every show needs, regardless of what it is or isn't, on every show at every every time. How did you pick up this? Effie is player. someone I've been trying to get up here forever. He is eccentric. He is flamboyant, but he's hardcore. He will. Beat you with a sexual toy and laugh in your face as he does it. Type of Joey Ryan. He has he has turned homophobic fans into front row players because he's that good. Okay. Now on the other hand, you have an, a man eater. You have a, a she monster in Maria Manic. She comes out. She was in your all female. She was in show. my all female okay. show. The crowd loves her at Innovative Pro. She came in the only female in the Innovational Scramble, and the crowd went nuts and loved her. This is going to be great. Two different kind of men eaters going at it. Um, Effie did a promo where he said "manic eater" across his stomach, which wow, is hysterical. That's I, I can't wait for that. Who you got? I gotta go with my girl. Maria Manic. Maria Manic. Like, I mean, you gotta go. I mean, listen, we're on the, you know, edges of evolution, and you're coming off of your all-female um, show that you did over the stuff. I gotta go with my girl. Darius Carter versus Jimmy Havoc. Now that. <laughs> that. <laughs> Chaos versus Order is what Darius has pinned it as. What I get so mad about, I tell Sir Wilkins about this whole time, I get so mad, but I understand is that Darius is always in fucking character. Like, I legit... Character? That's who he is. Like, I... I just, um, That's who he is. But I mean, like, that chick I interviewed with Mr. Black, he wasn't a character. Jack, he was, that was a, maybe he just liked you. <laughs> oh man, you're you're confusing. That's racist. I mean, but that, that was racist. It's that was confusing. racist. Black. That was racist. That's because of the name. You just assumed. That's cool. I mean, they're both black, so it's cool. So oh, I have it. I have it on good authority that Mr. Carter is going to lay a challenge down to Matt McIntosh before this match happens. Spoiler. I don't know what that's going to be exactly, but Jimmy Havoc beat Matt McIntosh at Bash in the Bronx because Darius Carter decided to take a stroll halfway to the ring. Yeah. Let's see what happens from there. Who you got? Uh, so like my job at Tears wants to say Darius, mm -hmm. but my wrestling cat wants to say Jimmy. How? I, I mean, so how do you bet I'm against just, that maniac? I'm I'm gonna go with Darius because I feel like he gives he oozes to me a lot of like what Ric Flair used to do back in the day, where like a thumb to the eye or like. 
a low blow and you wouldn't see it or a chair shot and you wouldn't know like I mean Darius likes to play dirty so is it I dirty though I don't think it is All right. I mean I just think that on the outside in it's dirty but like for me it's whatever it takes to get the W so I'm gonna go with Darius though Fans of MLW and the West Coast wrestling scene definitely know Brody King. And he's going to be taking on wrestling's five-tool player in Anthony Bowens, who recently made his Impact debut. Um, I think it's way too long in the making. He, sh he should be Impact champ. For, I mean, no offense to Johnny Impact, but Anthony Bowens can do it all. And Anthony Bowens has been with Battle Club from the beginning. Day one. First two main he's events are one. on his back. He's day one guy with you, so... I have to go with your day one guy. Like, at the end of the day, I'm always so consistency is everything. And he's he's family. Now we got the Battle Club Icons Championship match. The Deity of Damnation, Harlow O'Hare, will be taking on Big Swole, the May Young Classic 2 competitor, Ariel Monroe. I think she's married. <laughs> they both fine. They both fine. I can't now define this? You can, but you just, I'm just saying. Gotta be careful. Off screen creepiness. Clearly, it's always starting my life. Um, for some reason, my like third wrestling eye is telling me Ariel's gonna win and be your new icon. Champion. I mean, Harlow made the challenge to Jordan for WrestleCade, and Jordan Grace decided to take the match there and. The opportunistic that Harlow. That's crazy. That how that is. She, 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 she. I mean, did she steal the title? Did she just? No, she see, she, she is. She the sees oppor the opportunity. <laughs> so now, is she going to be able to successfully defend it one on one against someone who was on the world's grandest stage? You know, she was on WWE TV for the May Young Classic, mm -hmm. the biggest competition for women up until Evolution comes. Absolutely. I like I said. Hashtag by excellence, you will have a new, new champion. Wow. Icons champion. Now, speaking of championship, before we talk about, I think, your last match of the evening, what's your next title going to be? It's going to be the heavyweight championship. It'll be next year, decided next year. Um, that's all I'm going to give you. It's definitely going to be next year. 100 percent so, sure so we will have a heavyweight champion next year. So breaking 100 news, sure. Battle Club Pro will crown their so Battle Club Pro will be crowning their heavyweight champion in 2019. You heard it first. Yes. At the Jabba Tears podcast, but I always, I always admire the comp your company because you guys put on a phenomenal all female wrestling show and so your first champion of your company was a female and that to me speaks not only volumes it's definitely it's an innovative thing to do <laughs> good you see what i did there you did amazing there and thank you and i just think that that's what that to me is what differenti differentiates you guys from everyone else in the new york tri-state you want some more spoilers but I just want to, I want everybody to be clear that I'm not asking for this. He's, he's just giving it to me. So I, I will be bringing a star studded all female show to one of the five boroughs next year. So you, damn, you are so good. <laughs> so the second spoiler alert, guys, is that Battle Club Pro will bring their second all female show. No, third. Show, third oh, third, third, excuse me. Their third all female show back to New York City. And it, it's really one of the four boroughs because we're not going to do it in Staten Island. No, 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 no. Because, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I, I love some of my indie guys going to Staten Island. It's just. So that's so Warriors cool. turf. I would never disrespect. That's their turf. They can rock. So hard. I'm not going to get into that. So before, now that I'm, I'm ha Wilkins walked back in, you can't see he's off screen. Before I announce the main event, I will give you that. This that that matches the main event. Mm -hmm. Battle Club will honor its two-year anniversary with a tag team gauntlet, the first ever we in Battle Club in, in Battle Club history. And the teams that are announced are the Masons of the House and Glory School. Oh, the Perfect Strangers of the Warriors <laughs> of Wrestling School, Marquise Marquis, Andros the Greek. That is phenomenal. 
The Buffalo Brothers, Daniel Garcia and Kevin Blackwood. I wonder if he's related to you. Those guys have uh, been trained by Pepper Park, so okay. that Braxton Sutter connection. The fourth team is the production, Eddie Only and Derek Direction of Midwest fame. And the fifth team, the fifth team is two guys that, that did crazy good in the Bronx this past weekend. Wait, it's going to be the power, wait. Montana Black and Yaya in the Woo! forever Battle Cup Pro Gauntlet. That's excellent. It's all on the map, you guys. I, wa I waited up until this day to announce that My officially. Boys are so <laughs> As you can see us in the background, you, you got Servo and Mr. Black in the background losing their complete shit. <laughs> because, and that's the, another thing that, I, that I've always loved about, you know, not on top of doing the podcast and, you know, being and going to different, you know, independent shows and wrestling shows, is really supporting those that put on the show. Like, it, we, we, we only go far because of those that support us and those that have always, you know, looked out for us. And that's why, like, I told this one in confidence. I said, I'm going to put my hard earned cash into a show. Oh, we're not about sponsorship. No, we're going to talk about it for a second. This is a match you guys are sponsoring. Thank this you. is a match you're going to make the announcement for for the first two teams. For you. I, I understand that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway it's our business, at the end of the day, you support those that support you. And that's all that is. All so, I mean, this is a dumb question, but who you got? I mean, no, it's hard because oh, Marcus. Carolina, you know, it's hard. Just like a helicopter, North Carolina. I, I'm actually biased though because my bro Marcus Marquis is in the match too, so I can't. Oh, not, Marcus see, so like we can't just <laughs> say our boys, you know, from the south, like North Carolina. Raise <laughs> up from your head, just like a helicopter, I wish North you guys Carolina. Could see um, but I mean, to have our boys Montana and Yaya win would be dope. I will say that. I will so, so loud. Like, I'll be in the ring with this celebrate though. You actually, <laughs> actually won't though. I'm gonna call it little mom. It's security. You won't. I'm gonna do like this. <laughs> yeah, like you said, oh, gosh. I got so, the ring. Can we do that? Can we run into the ring after you the ring? You have to ask. You better be in the ring, ring to make the announcement no, for the I'm match. Really about it. After, if they, if they win, you guys can go in and celebrate. Sliding because as you see, Vince tried that shit. Oh, and yeah, you failed. don't know how to tear so your quads. You don't quads. want to tear both your quads, sir. No, I think no. I'll be fine. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, that. I'm on an NGH like this. Like Sweet. So here's our main event. All right. Uh, The Bad Apple, Matt McIntosh, Mr. Pisses Apple Juice, is going to take That's on dope, the yeah. Bronx <laughs> native, the Brooklyn native, the, the man that puts New York wrestling on the map. Ooh. Homicide has been representing <laughs> New York better than everybody over the last 20 years. Absolutely. It, in my eyes, and this is no offense to anybody else, it goes from Taz being that man who Absolutely. represents New York right into Homicide. The Notorious 187 is the essence of what Battle Club is. Battle Club is the Bronx. And I know we've been in Jersey for most of this year. Last spoiler of the day. Jersey no more after this. So you thank guys God. heard thank God. They got on my on my pockets and Jersey Transit sucks. Um they don't run 24 hours all the way. <laughs> but you heard it guys on the live feed and on YouTube land that this will be Battle Club Pro's last show in the state of New Jersey. So I say to you on that, welcome back home. <laughs> It is going to be a great, I feel like for you guys, it's going to be a great 2019. I think that Homicide will win on Saturday at Battle Club Pro's show. So that is my winner for that. Um, so once again, those that have not gotten their tickets already, tickets will be at the door, yes or no? They'll be at the door, sure. Absolutely, but it's always good to have a little pre-sale. So for those that have not already purchased a ticket, you can go to BattleClubPro.com for tickets and more information. Um, anything else you want to talk about your 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 stick before we sign Mr. Off? Black, Mr. Black wants to go home. Uh, all I can say is thank every single. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. Thank every single <laughs> worker that's going to be on the show. It's going to be incredible. It is a massive anniversary show. Bell is at six. Uh, the show's over when it ever de when it decides to be over. Um, but it's going to be shorter than Mania, guys, it's, so you'll be fine. It's, it's going to be shorter than Mania, but it's going <laughs> to be fun. Right. You're going to be able to interact with all the workers. 
Intermission is going to be crazy. There's going to be a giveaway. The raffle tickets will be on sale. I'm very accessible via social media if you guys want to reach you wanna out. You want to drop your social media so those that are watching know. My what? life is together, so on my social media is my real name, Joe Kim Morales. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, this I the think, think yeah, yeah, that. Thank you guys. Yeah. You guys are one of my favorite sponsors. Thank Besides you. being super professional, you're my friends. I've known you guys going on six years now, so this is awesome. It's been a long time coming, and I and like I always say, you support those that support you. Uh, before we do sign off, I do want to always remind those that as evolution is creeping up on us. Um, I am co-hosting a brunch in New York City. Um, so for those that are coming and watching Evolution, females only. Sorry, guys. Um, we're gonna get the ladies together and have some good old mimosas and some good old um, brunch food, pancakes, you know, steak and eggs. And we're gonna just shoot the shit like the guys. Like, it's okay for females to be wrestling fans too. You don't have to like a wrestler because he look good. Like wrestling because it's a part of your passion. Um, so, you can hit us up on the Java Series Podcast, Instagram, and Facebook for more information on are up from my upcoming event brunching ladies of wrestling with my girls lucy t chrissy and alex uh, but tickets are also on sale on eventbrain.com so you can search the event brunching ladies of wrestling um as the owner of battle pro mentioned um his show is this saturday um once again battlecompro.com for more tickets and more information um as you see i actually today wore I would stand up, but I don't feel like it. I wore my Jabba Tears podcast shirt. So you can be a fellow Jabba as well. You can catch our shirts on ProWrestlingTees.com slash Jabba Tears podcast. Support the movement because it is growing. We got shirts in Arizona. Got shirts in Chicago. Got shirts all over the place. So, and, um... Hit him, Mr. Black. He got the connect. Um, hashtag pitiful. Um, I want to thank... From the bottom of my heart, the owner of Battle Pro, Joaquin Morales, for joining us on this special edition of the Java TS Podcast. As always, it's appreciated to me to see my good friend um, make real moves in the independent wrestling scene. Like, I always tell you off camera, but I'm telling on camera he how money moves. Money moves. How I am astonishingly proud of you. And I, I cannot wait to see what 2019 holds you since you are coming back home to New York City. Um, as always, you can follow Battle Club Pro. What's your Instagram? For Instagram your? and Twitter is X Paddle Club Pro. And then Facebook is just Battle Club Pro. You can hit up the email if you want, info at battleclubpro.com if you're a worker for booking inquiries. You can probably just come straight to me. I, I watch everything. I do my homework. Um, Wrestlers. Yeah. yeah this? And then, but last but not least, I, I want to segue into this. I will... I, I am nothing without my production team. So guys like Zane Decker, Donnie Walsh, Brian K, amazing. Jay Lee Photography from, from down south are going to be there. They're going to be doing amazing work. And, and the ultimate praise goes to Mark Adam Haggerty. He is the best announcer on the East Coast. No questions asked. That man is a very, very important reason as to why we're so successful. So thank you, Mark. Thank you, B-plus Player Radio. Thank you for everything you've ever done for us. All right. Um, as always, you can follow us on the Java Series Podcast, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that jazz. Um, hashtag Black Excellence, hashtag route. It's the Java Series Podcast.